What's up LEGO fans? I'm James May, but not that James May, LEGO designer turned AFOL, and this is TubeSide. Shite? This is TubeSide, money Benny. This is TubeSide, the show we take a sneak peek underneath the brick to see how LEGO sets are designed. Today we'll be looking at my fourth and final LEGO Ideas model, where the training wheels finally come off and I have to do some big boy designing. We won't be shaking it like a Polaroid picture, because you're meant to leave the photo face down and not touch it. But we are talking about the LEGO Ideas Polaroid camera. As usual with LEGO Ideas, the idea is that the users can submit ideas to the LEGO Ideas website, and when they get to 10,000 votes, they get reviewed to become made into a real LEGO set, and this Polaroid camera idea was submitted by Minibrick. Now, although I'm older than the generous portrait mode of my camera would lead you to believe, I'm not that old. So I didn't have a one-step camera growing up. I did, however, have a Polaroid iZone as a kid, which is one of the last non-hipster uses for the camera before digital took over. The transparent blue one I had was a nice bit of Y2K aesthetic tech. I got it because it reminded me of the colours from the Ice Slicer, if anyone remembers those. As mentioned in other episodes, I'm a collector of old tech junk, including old cameras, which despite this and going by the light setup in my videos, I don't actually know how to use them. So I was quite happy to leave the Orient Express train to Conductor Ollie so I can make another fine addition to my collection. Mini Brick, being the good bro that he is, actually made instructions for his version. So the first thing I had to do was build through it and see how it holds up. The mechanism for this version has a gear that you turn on the side, which drives a wheel inside and pushes a tile out. Now, to make the camera 100% to scale, the model would have to be 30 modules wide, which this version was. But as anyone who has built with LEGO can tell you, this leads to a pretty unstable model, as most elements come in even numbers of studs. So you're constantly having to make basic shapes out of two or three elements to add on that one extra module at the end. So the options were either 12 or 14 modules, and after trying both, 12 looked the most right. Here's a version zero I made, which is 12 wide, and we had the wheel mechanism with the gear on the right, and a two by six tile on the front for a nice big sticker for the stripes. Being on the LEGO adults team is great because you get to sit next to some of the greatest LEGO designers in the entire world. But the problem is, is that you sit next to some of the greatest LEGO designers in the entire world. So when we were talking to Polaroid and they were asking, oh, can you make it so that the button actually works when you press it? Instead of the answer being, no, of course not, that's way too complicated. We go back and say, yes, absolutely, of course we can do that. So. Back to the drawing board. The gear on the side made the mechanism much simpler, as you can just have an axle directly connecting it to the inside to drive the mechanism. But to link that to the button required a bunch of linkages to get to the photo and then somehow force it out. The short travel distance of the button meant that it couldn't be driven by that motion and require some stored energy. This meant we knew that we were going to use rubber bands or springs. Great. The best way to try and build a function out of LEGO is to first build it out, which I did with a bunch of different versions with the help of my partner in crime, mech master, and function whiz, Nick van Slagmat. I definitely said his last name wrong, but I did it on purpose. We figured out that in the space that we had, the best option for maximum travel was to have a lever come from the top, which would then push it out with the stored energy from the rubber bands. Great! Now to just come up with a sled, which is pushed back when you put the photo in, connect that to an arm which is under tension with rubber bands, and then have a trigger mechanism that's linked to the button. Easy! We got really stupid by using the empty space in this Technic element, really pushing the limits in the LEGO system to exploit every bit of weird element geometry. But finally, after all that... Oh, oh, oh. So, we actually made the mechanism too good. Talk about flash photography! <laughs> so I had to add a bunch of extra bits on the inside to lightly brush the picture just enough that it doesn't fly out, but also making sure that it makes it out the slot. Speaking of the pictures, they were originally going to be LEGO tiles like in the fan submission, but we found from the tooling engineers that due to the manufacturing constraints, if we were going to go down that route, we'd have to have a big injection point in the middle. This meant that we wouldn't be able to print on that area, leaving a big hole in the picture. So we went with this plasticky cardy stuff, which worked much better, and we could print on both sides, and it helped with dampening that was needed to make sure it didn't fly out. The other design considerations weren't quite so big-brained. I managed to leave a view down the viewfinder, viewable, so you can find your view. It just adds a bit of extra first-person play to the model. When we started the project, we bought a couple of old Polaroid cameras off eBay for reference, but being in Denmark, we got the European ones, which have a 1000 on the label instead of one step, and the land camera sticker is left justified instead of centered, so I made sure to include those options. No Sears special stickers though, sadly. 
I went with the bare studs in the back to simulate the change in surface finish on the real camera. With the angled plates, there isn't really angled tiles without studs, so it's either really patchy or just commit to the studs aesthetic. Also, this is just an aside, but we would always refer to surface textures as BDIs, and I never actually knew what that stood for until I looked it up for this video. So, turns out it stands for Verin... Verin... Verein Deutscher Ingenieure. The Society of German Engineers, who set a standard on injection molding polishing. Who knew? You know how in LEGO models there's all those bright colours on the inside that Aphels just love? Well, for this model, I thought it would be fun to limit myself to only use the colours of the Polaroid stripes, just for that extra little, little bit of spice. <laughs> boy. For the stripe down the front, I wasn't quite satisfied with the sticker on the front face, as it wouldn't come down over the edge like it does on the real thing. So the Galaxy Brain move was to flip the whole build upside down and brick build the stripe to give it the signature edge. Again, exploiting the LEGO system, to get the stud facing out on both sides of the slope, we went for this build with the Unikitty chins with the lightsaber blades in them, with the blades going into the longer tube size, like and subscribe, with the wall bricks. This one step feels so satisfying to put together. <laughs> Despite this model being a real head-scratcher with the mechanism, I think it's one of my best designs. The brick-built stripe gives it a lot of LEGO DNA, and despite me complaining, having the button trigger the function gives the model an extra bit of wow factor than it would have otherwise. It's just a shame that a lot of these functions in LEGO models, particularly adult ones, there's the wow factor of when you first build them, but afterwards, they go on a shelf, and all that extra design work feels a bit redundant. So. I encourage you all to set reminders on your phone to take the model off your shelf every so often and play with them, not just for your own satisfaction, but to appreciate the blood, sweat and tears that went into these silly wee gimmicks. So I hope you liked another sneaky look in the brightly coloured inside of another banger LEGO set. If you have any questions about the Polaroid camera, feel free to comment down below and hopefully I can answer them. And if there's another LEGO set from my brickography that you want me to cover next, uh, leave that as a comment down below as well. I'll leave a link in the description. Don't forget to snap that like button and... Hit subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. See ya!